Welcome to part two of our tutorial. First, I'm going to go into Hoboware and open up a data file that I saved from the data logger on the boiler fan, where it had been logging fan motor activity for several months. Here you can see the dark lines showing areas of activity. Zoom in and we can see with greater resolution the timing and active firing and rest periods. Now export table data to a comma-separated value file, which we can then open up in Microsoft Excel. The zero here tells me that the fan was off when I first installed the logger, and then turned on about four minutes later. After selecting this cell, I hit control down arrow to jump to the last cell of this column which contains information. I'll enter X's in these cells that'll enable me to jump around in the, those columns as well. It'll be useful later on. Control up arrow brings me back to the top row again. I went ahead and saved the file as a native Excel file and entered a bit of information about my boiler for reference later on. Here you can see. Now let's start adding columns for the information I want to pull from this data file. Suppose I'm interested in the monthly energy use of the boiler. I'll add a column called month and start with the first full rest period row, or row 5. I'll use the text function to extract the month number from the timestamp string. A single lowercase m in the format text argument gives me what I want. In addition to the amount of time that the boiler is actively firing, I'm also interested in knowing the rest periods that is, the length of time between periods of active firing. I'll call this the rest time. Since I'm interested in the time durations, I need to grab the start and stop times for each cycle. That means I need two points of reference for each value of interest. So, I'll use the IF function to populate this cell if the motor sensor value is zero. So, I just tell it to subtract the time when it stops from the time when it starts again. And I have the rest period for this cycle calculated. If the motor sensor value reads anything other than zero, the two double quotes tell Excel to display a blank cell. Now I do essentially the same thing for fire time, except that I take the difference between the time that it stops and the time that it last started. These numbers we're seeing are actually fractions of days, so let's reformat them to something more meaningful at a glance. So we'll take a custom number format. So I go to my custom format and find the one that's closest to what I want. Let's allow two characters for hours place and one character for the days place. Depending on what you're measuring, you might want to allow two or even three days. That's a bit easier to read. Still, I'd like to have a simple numerical value for hours in my sheet, so let's add this duration column. Just like before, I only want to populate every other row, so I'll reference the motor sensor column. And just multiply the fire time by 24 to give me a decimal value of hours. I'll reduce the decimal places to make it easier to read. Before we go any further, I'm going to add a bit more information about my boiler. I know its efficiency is 80%, and since I know that the heat output of the boiler is a million five thousand BTUs per hour, I can also calculate the fuel utilization rate in CCF per hour. Efficiency is what I get out divided by what I put in. So rearranging to solve for what I have to put in, I simply divide the output by the product of the heat content in BTUs of one CCF of natural gas and the efficiency of the boiler. This gives me about 12.3 CCF per hour. Now, the CCF used from each cycle is easy to calculate. 
Just as before, I'll reference to determine if this is to be a populated cell or a blank cell. And then I multiply the duration by the CCF per hour I just calculated. I'll hit F4 to make this an absolute reference. Now I'll hold down control button and select the cells I've created and copy them. Now holding down shift and control, I'll hit the down arrow. Remember the X's we entered before? They marked the end of the data file. Then I hit the up arrow once while still holding down the shift button. Then paste. If I did everything correctly, the entire data file should now be populated with my extracted and calculated values. Looks like it worked. As I said before, I want to note the monthly energy use. So, let's create another small table to the right of our data set. We need columns for the year, the month, and the CCF used. Here I'm entering the numbers of the months for which we have data. And then I'll enter the years. Now I'm going to use the SUMIFS function. I select the data range I want to sum. I'll select the first cell, hit F4 to make it an absolute reference, then shift control down arrow to select all the way to the last row. Then, still holding shift down, I let go of control and hit the up arrow once. Since I made the first cell an absolute reference, this final cell reference is also made an absolute reference. I let go of shift and hit comma. Now I enter the second argument of the function, the first criteria range. Let's start with the year and select the year column the same way that I selected the CCF used column. Select the first cell, hit F4, then hold down shift and control and hit the down arrow. Let go of control, hit the up arrow once. And again we have absolute cell references. Now I type a comma and enter the third argument. I want to sum data for the year 2010, so I'll select the year in my new data table. This is a relative cell reference. This will make it easier to populate the rest of my data table. I have another criterion for this summation. I want to sum for the month of July 2010. So now I type another comma and repeat what I just did for the month column. The reference in my new data table should be relative and the references in my raw data set should be absolute. Now I'll use the fill handle to populate the rest of the table. If you have a recent version of Excel, you can use conditional formatting to create attractive data bars. If you have an older version of Excel, you can use the repeat function instead. This function simply repeats a character, in this case the vertical line, the number of times you specify. To keep our bars manageable, let's divide by 10 and reduce the font size. Now I'll use the fill handle to populate the rest of the table. Finally, I can take the average, minimum, and maximum of my new data table. Thank you for your attention during this tutorial. I wish you the best of luck in your equipment monitoring endeavors.